Well, good morning, guys, and welcome to the show. Today, we have a car stereo lab. And the product we're gonna focus on today, well, there's two of them. And when combined, they make a super powerful, small five channel amplifier. Let's head over to the bench. And those two products are the Sound Digital Evo X 404 and 801. Let's start with the 404 and open it up and see what comes in the box. Along with the amplifier, you get a Sound Digital sticker, an Allen key, two high level plugs, the quick start guide, and for the full installation guide, you can scan the QR code here on the back. It'll take you off to the website where you can download it. Opening the 801, Inside the box, you find a similar bag, sound digital sticker, Allen key, a single high level plug, and of course, the quick start guide with a QR code on the back. These two guys are tiny and very efficient. 404, 400 watts. 801, 800 watts. Lots of power, super tiny heatsink. Actual size on the 404, 1.9 inches tall, 4.8 inches wide, and four inches deep. On the 801, same, 1.9 inches tall, four inches deep, 5.8 inches wide. With small amplifiers, one of the biggest questions we get is my amplifier gets hot. And in the owner's manual, they talk about that. These are designed to get up to, and sometimes over, 140 degrees. When mounted, make sure there's some ventilation. And that leads us to the first technology built into both of these amplifiers, which is DTR, or Dynamic Thermal Recovery. DTR is a system which always maintains a high efficiency of the amplifier by accelerating the thermal exchange of electronic components with the heatsink, and it's patented. Next, ultra compact PCBs, the circuit boards that are inside of these. An intelligent layout with great use of area and use of modern components with reduced structure guarantees Sound Digital's products a compact design at the same time robust and with excellent excellent thermal efficiency. Basically what they're saying is that these amplifiers are designed in-house specifically this size to do what they do and they're maximized to their greatest potential. One of the new features built into the Evo X is the vibration absorption device. They added a new device which acts like a shock absorber reducing the impact of vibration on the electronic circuit board thereby increasing the life and reliability of the amplifier. They've also added the new iPower supply. Sound digital amps are known for their low consumption of battery. The new iPower supply is even more modern, which replaces the old toroidal transformers by a new generation of EE core transformers, which deliver efficiency above 90%, measured at the power supply, ensuring more hours of sound without battery recharge. One of the reasons why I wanted to talk about these amplifiers and get them in and play with them is we get a lot of questions about the new hybrid car cars that have batteries and no engines and you guys still want lots of power that's what these are for these are designed to play in those environments such as motorcycles ATVs that have small electrical systems so that only stands within reason if you take them up into the automotive world in cars that have small electrical systems they'll shine there as well let's take a closer look at the amplifiers themselves we'll start here with the 404 in the top two corners you'll see the high level inputs that's what that plug was for that we showed you earlier. You have your four channel RCA inputs, channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four. So screen here on the bottom, make sure you pay attention to that. Gain controls for channels one and two, gain control for three and four. Crossovers between 45 and 850 hertz. That's pretty impressive. Most crossovers stop around 220, so go all the way up to 850. LP, which is low pass. F, which is full range, no crossover. And you have HP, which is high pass, located on both sides. On the opposite side of the amplifiers where all your connections are done, both power and speaker. Starting in the corner, you have a power light here, which lights up blue. This is where you have to pay attention on this amplifier. First up, you have ground, remote turn on, and your 12 volt constant in. Now they do recommend running an eight gauge oxygen free copper wire. No CCA on these guys. Next, you're gonna have channel four and channel three. These amplifiers are bridgeable to four ohm. What's unique about this is you'll see there's only three three terminals for each one of the speaker connections. In the middle here, it's gonna be your positive and negative for 
the opposite channel. Channel four, you'll have negative on the outside. The positive will go here in the middle. Channel three, you'll have positive on the outside and negative will go here in the middle. The same is true on this end for channels two and channels one. Taking a look at the 801, it adds a few features that the 404 doesn't have. And those are over here in the power section. You have a power light, a clip indicator, and a protection light. Control wise, you have bass boost, which is centered at 50 hertz for zero to 12 dBs of gain, low pass crossover, variable between 50 and 500 hertz, a subsonic filter that's variable between five and 30 hertz, gain control. You have your two line level inputs along with your high level input over here in the corner. On the opposite end, power inputs, oxygen free eight gauge is recommended, ground, remote, battery. The same size terminals here on your output, that means you can put up to an eight gauge for your output if you'd like. Negative on one side, positive on the other. In the corner, you'll notice this ohm load. These do come in different ohm load configurations, both two and four ohm. That indicator on the side of the amp is what tells you what it is capable of doing. Let's take a look at some specifications for the amplifier. The 404 comes in at four by 66 watts at four ohm. It does increase the power output at two ohm. It has a frequency response from five to 22,000 hertz. The low pass filter, as we said, was between 45 and 850 hertz. The high pass filter is the same. Operating input voltage is between eight and 16 volts with a signal to noise of 88 dB. Input sensitivity is 0.2 to four volts. Current draw during music is 19 amps with a maximum current draw of 39 amps. Total efficiency of the amplifier is 82%. Recommended fuse size is a 20 amp fuse. Moving on to the 800.1, the specs are at four ohms, 800 watts. Frequency response is five to 500 hertz. Low pass filter is between 50 and 500 hertz. The high pass filter, also called the subsonic, is between five and 30 hertz. Operating voltage is eight to 16 volts. Signal to noise is 90 dBs. Input sensitivity is 0.2 to four volts. Current draw while playing music is 40 amps. Maximum current draw is gonna be 79 amps. Total efficiency of the amplifier is 79% and they recommend a 40 amp fuse. Let me know all the cool specs about the amplifier. I want to get these wired up onto an amp board and let's get them into the car so that we can show you how to set the gains on these and well listen to them. Want to see how they perform. Want to put them to the test. Want to blare this thing. Want to see how loud it gets. To mount the amplifier we'll be using a quarter inch piece of ABS. We've rounded over the sides and added a five star logo to it. All the wiring is dressed up in a flexi loom but the ends because these do use a screw down terminal have been terminated in a ferrule. This is a ferrule. It's a sleeve that goes over the end of the wire. It uses a tool like this. Ferrule goes into the hole, wire goes into here, and you crimp it down and you end up with an end like this that then goes into these screw terminals. It helps to keep the wire, the little tiny pieces, from getting torn and ripped. It also makes for a much cleaner end. What you're looking at here is how we've taken these four wires and put them together. On this side is going to be the left front positive. This is going to be the right right front negative and the two in the middle we've put inside of one ferrule crimped together in the layout according to the amplifier. The first step is to screw these amplifiers to the board. To do that you do need to get these end plates off. They slide up from the bottom just like that and they pop off. A very thin pry tool does make it easier. For this installation, we want to put the four channel amplifier first followed by the mono block. The reasoning for that is that this has a ton of wires coming out of the end of it. This just has power and subwoofer. The idea is to separate the two. I'm gonna have my signal come down around and up to pair up with this signal and then off. My power wire is going to come along this way. Sub wire will come this way and of course all my speaker wires will come out the end here. When working with a ABS, make sure you use a drill to pre-drill your holes. Don't just screw into it. ABS is not a big fan of that. I've pre-made up both of my ends. Something that you're gonna wanna pay attention to is they're not the same. On this one, the left positive is being used and on this one, the left negative is being used. Pay attention when hooking this amplifier up is all I can say.
When cutting zip ties, make sure you use a flush trim cutter. If you'll notice the back side of these is perfectly flat, that's what you're looking for. If a zip tie just has a little bit hanging off, it becomes a very, very sharp cutting knife. By getting my wires attached on both sides here, I could see how much distance I need between the two. I want to get these amplifiers as close together as possible, but yet as far apart as need be. I like to put parts back on amplifiers once I don't need them off anymore. In this case, because the only thing going into this end of the amplifier is an RCA, I don't need this off. I do need it off on this side until I get the screws in. I like to do that because it gives me some form of feeling of accomplishment, like I've moved past a point in the installation. Because I need this wire to cross over the top of this wire, I'm gonna add in a quarter inch riser to clear this. I like to divide the amplifiers into segments. You have your speaker or output segment, you have your input segment, and you have your power segment. It makes it easier to kind of figure out where everything needs to go. We have two of the three segments done. With our wiring all done, the last thing I want to do is turn my gains all the way down and then get it in the car and we're going to show you how to set the gain structure up according to the instructions that came with the amplifiers. You always want to check the gains. Some manufacturers ship their amplifiers with the gains all the way down, some ship them with the gains all the way up. Either way, it's good practice to check them before you get them into the car. For those of you that are new to the lab, the lab is Fernando's G35. Inside of it for a source unit, it has a GS9. There are a set of amplifiers in there. It is set up like a test bench that allows us to do all kinds of things. In this case, at the moment, he's testing the DSP because there's amplifiers in there all the time. It's easy enough to do. There's a subwoofer, there's components up front. Just makes for a really easy way for us to swap in and out products to test them and see how they perform in a real world environment other than on the bench. To set the gain on the amplifier and the owner's manuals for each amplifier, they go through how to do that. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Here we have the owner's manual for the 404. If we scroll down on page 13, it talks about setting up the gain. For this, you'll need a digital AC voltmeter, a media with sine wave and a test tone of 60 hertz at zero dB, and an eighth inch screwdriver. If you don't have an it's test tone, you can go to sounddigital.com slash tracks for setup and download it there. So looking at the setup procedure, the first thing it's telling us is this is going to work channels 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. We want to turn the gain all the way down, which we did. Disconnect output cables from the amplifier outputs. We haven't connected them into the car yet. We've just hooked up power and ground, so we're good there. Turn off all processors, bass, treble, loudness, etc. That's going to be in the head unit, be it factory or aftermarket. Make sure it's set to flat. Set the volume at 3 quarters. Make sure that your fader control is set to the center. Set the crossover to the F or full range. Let's hop into the car and do just that. Digital multimeter set to AC, which is volts with the little squiggly line above it. Connect it to the two channels. Start turning up slowly. And just kind of sugar it a little bit. Get as close as you can. You don't have to be perfect. Yeah, that's close enough there. Repeat the process on the other two channels. Let's head over to the bench though and we'll talk about how we're going to set up the 800.1. The 800.1, it has a clip light indicator. The startup process is basically the same. Make sure everything is turned off just like on the other one. Use a 60 hertz sine wave. Increase the gain control until the clip LED starts blinking. Return the gain to the limit where the clip LED stop blinking and remains off. And that's basically it. Let's head back into the car. Start slowly turning up your gain until you see that orange light right there come on. Turn it down and that would be set. However, for this, I do want to add a little bass boost. So I'm going to turn that up just a little bit. Now I'm going to readjust my gain 
with the base boost added. Yeah, all right, that's it. Last step is to set the crossovers on them, dial those into place. If you're not using something like a DSP or, or any form of external crossover of any kind, a good place to start is 80 hertz for both high pass and low pass. That'll get you in the ballpark of adequate crossover. It's time to hop in the car and take a listen. We're gonna get the subwoofer enclosure in here. I'll meet you inside. Yeah. Uh, we've been sitting in the car for a while, obviously playing a bunch of non-DRM music, and we've switched to our DRM stuff just so that we could listen to it and play it so that you guys could hear it. Mm -hmm. Um, Dude, that's, that's double. Wow. That is like... Essentially what we have here is two super tiny, very efficient amplifiers mm -hmm. that are putting out a ton of sound. Yes. A ton of sound. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That small amplifier, the full channel, it was perfect. You know, it's like tweeters, mid bass. Awesome. We're running it active. Yeah. It's really putting out a lot of sound. Yeah. One of the questions we get all the time, as I said at the opening of the show, was, you know, I have a hybrid car. I don't want something with a bunch of current draw and whatnot. And this is not going to disappoint. There's no doubt about it. That little 800 watt amp. Ooh. In this, we just have it on an 8, but imagine it on like a 12. Dude, this is 8 and sounds... Sounds really good. Sounds really good, really yes. Good. Pretty happy about that. Totally happy, yeah. He doesn't get excited that often, you know how he is. Huh? mission was when I took this task on, when I reached out to Sound Digital and I was like, hey, I want to do something with these small amplifiers. I had no idea this is where it would end up, that we would be this surprised. With this is small footprint of yeah. the amplifiers, yeah. Well, I'm happy. I like it. I'm happy. I'm running the amplifiers. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Now, naturally, like all car stereo labs, Fernando gets to rock around with this for we'll till we need to take it out with something else so he's gonna be banging on this so by all means if you're catching in the live show check in and ask him hey how are the sound digitals doing yeah are you still happy with them are they still performing like you would hope all right guys we hope you enjoyed this episode of the car stereo lab on to the next one guys maybe not right away though I gotta just slow it down all right so let's play some music Okay. And you know what? It's not even uh, the volume that I always listen to it. It's like less than the volume that I always listen to it. So yeah, it's a plus. Well, let's see.